meet. Good evening, members. Bona sifiwe. We want to thank God for yet another Tuesday um, when we are here together to do the virtual engagement. And uh, we are continuing with the conversation that we started last week about the finance bill and its impact on us. And tonight we have CPA Kakai who will carry on with the conversation. So we just want to give ourselves a few more minutes as we allow people to join. We shall ask um, one of us, I think that will be Elder Caroline Gonjiri again to welcome uh, CPA Kakai to take us through the engagement. So, so karibuni sana na buwana wabariki. Eh, thank you, Evangelist. Uh, we'll start with a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are before you this evening. We just want to say thank you because you are God, a good God. Your plans for us are always very good. We want to thank you that the power has disappeared. It is back. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted that you've taken care of all of us from the last time we were in these airwaves. You have hidden us. You have protected us. You have provided for us. We give thanks. You have even today given us uh, somebody who is going to facilitate our discussion tonight. We give you thanks and we ask that you may bless them indeed. And you have brought us together, Lord, even to listen, to hear and to run. Because uh, we know, like you said before, that you, your people perish because of lack of knowledge. And therefore, it is up to us to get knowledge. Thank you for opening this way this uh, venue, uh, avenue where we can get knowledge. Tonight, Lord Holy Spirit, we want to welcome you that you'll be in our, in our midst even as we listen, as we discuss. That, Lord, we are asking for smooth learning of today's uh, uh, discussion, that the, the, air, the airwaves will be clear, the power will not disappear, that everything will run well because Jesus, we know where you, we know where you are. Everything goes well. We thank you and we bless you. And this Lord, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, then I think I also take this opportunity to uh, welcome CPA Kai Kai. You have done. You did a great job last time. We appreciate. Uh, then the, we had a bit of. Um, disruption we couldn't understand each other but today with god's help i'm sure we shall understand each other we appreciate you we appreciate the knowledge that god has given you and uh, the fact that you are also willing to share that we also don't take it for granted so feel very welcome to pick up where we you left last week and we also want to acknowledge Muravi, our very own who did the connection for us. Moravi, may the Lord bless you too. We are supposed to share what we have and uh, this is what we are doing. And Lord, this, uh, and this we, we want to take this opportunity to also welcome all of uh, our members who are able to join us tonight. I'm sure we are going to have more. It is always good to have knowledge. And then we, God also gives us wisdom. But he expects us to look for the knowledge. Thank you very much, Evangelist. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Caroline uh, Elder and the Evangelist uh, Mahinda. I hope I can go. Yes, you can continue. Okay, okay. So uh, thank you very much, uh, PCS Ukari. Um, I, I, I didn't tell you last time that um, I have known PCS Sukari for the last six years. This is my sixth year. Actually, my daughter was there from 2018 and she did her class eight on 2022. Uh, and of course, uh, she, she, she made it and passed. She's now a form one student in, um, at Moik Moya School Kabarak. So, uh, uh, of course, I've been to the church, I've been to the school. So I'm one of you in one way or the other. <laughs> so um, um, my colleague, Michael Muridi um, Mwangi, is um, a colleague and also a colleague in the profession. 
So those are some of the issues that uh, I, I didn't expound. Now, if I may ask, are we able to see the screen? Am I, um, um, the, the word should be Impact of Finance Act 2023. We are, we are able to see, but very small letters. Yeah, yeah. But I'll, I'll be able to explain in detail because if you put it in slideshow, it doesn't move. I, I don't know what is the problem. But then um, last time I was particularly on the tax proposals and tax effects that were in the Finance Act for that very Tuesday. Um, but today I'll be specifically on the impact of the Finance Act and how we, we, we are going to be affected in one way or the other positively and negatively. So I'll, I'll move. Um, one, the presentation will be more of um, a discussion at the end, but I'll, I'll, take, it, I'll take us through in, um, in three forms. One, just a quick introduction of the budget process, the figure, which we had also looked at, but just very briefly. And then I'll, 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 I'll look at the key discussion points in terms of uh, the Finance Act, although it has uh, <clears throat> had a court order to stop it, its implementation a little bit for up to tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> but of course, IPRA has gone ahead and defied the court order and uh, the fuel prices are already up. And then, of course, I'll, I'll have what we call other matters and then the final thoughts on the entire uh, Finance um, Act 2023. Of course, it will have to be implemented uh, in one way or the other because it's a revenue raising measure for the entire budget. So the budget for this year, like I mentioned last time, just to, to be able to remember for those who may not have been there, this budget is a 3.6 seven trillion budget with a projected uh, revenue collection of 3.1 trillion which implies that there's a deficit but the total budget is 4.4 billion uh, trillion because uh, in the budget we have the the 850 billion which is the principal debt redemption um, uh, i mean the debt we owe um, uh, both domestic and uh, and, uh, and, and, and foreign debts, it's around 850, which has been budgeted for repayment. And of course, we have the interest on payments of the, the debt, which is around 775 uh, billion. So when you, you take 3.6 plus the, the principal debt redemption of 8. Uh, 850 billion, then you find the budget being 4.449. Uh, a little bit higher by around um, 0.4 billion a trillion of the uh, compared to last year. This implies that there will be a budget deficit uh, in, in terms of collection of around 718 billion. Uh, but but uh, the year that has just ended, that ended on a Friday, was it Friday 30th, uh, was um, it had a physical deficit of 840 billion. So there is a little bit of a reduction there. But when you add up the 7.8 billion uh, uh, deficit plus the 850, you find that again, we need more money to finance the, the burden of debt and the budget deficit. The other issue now, I'll be specific. Uh, you can listen to this. What is the impact of, of this finance act on individuals, organized groups, churches, and schools. Um, and these were specific questions which came across from uh, the membership and uh, even as our, our very own uh, thinking and, and specifically for the, the through the evangelists, we coordinated and uh, arrived at some of these uh, very important areas. One of the impacts on the individuals, groups, and churches is the 16% petroleum levy, which of course will increase the, uh, will lead to a high cost of living. Automatically, that has already happened at the pump. You'll notice that uh, uh, the petrol pro, uh, pro, uh, product, uh, the, the petroleum um, diesel, and um, uh, what we may call uh, 
generally the petrol the petrol stations uh, the cost is higher um, which uh, directly goes into transport costs going up directly goes to of course electricity will go up the the, the movement of um, uh, even uh, the, the the farming uh, area in terms of tractors will go up because of, of this so generally the increase from eight percent to 16 percent VAT automatically brings in a, what I may call inflationary pressure and, 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 and of course a higher cost of living. So you'll realize that with the VAT going up, then the, the basic uh, commodity prices of, of goods, if you go to a supermarket, the effect would be that um, the prices would uh, have an extra 8%, although the government has been arguing that it's not 8%, it's 6% because the, there was a reduction in uh, import declaration and um, uh, railway maintain uh, railway development levy and then the other effect on individuals <coughs> and churches uh, members of uh, pcs Ukari is that um, we have the housing levy 1.5 which will of course reduce the disposable income for purposes of uh, for, for the for employees who are salaried um because this is to be charged on um on um gross salary so even if you have other loans which are being deducted uh, this goes to um uh, to another one percent of your gross salary um and, and reducing your um, your disposable income and in, in 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 this case even the employer of course i'll talk about the employer employer has to contribute the same once the disposable income is reduced of course uh, we we are looking at the church and uh, any other um uh, any other organization or people who, who receive uh, donations who receive tithing the generosity factor will also go down in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the reduced disposable income school fees payments parents ability to pay for their children will also be a real issue Although the schools may also benefit from this finance act in what we call clean energy that uh, the government has always been focusing on when you look at the entire act. Number two is the impact on employees, like, um, like I already mentioned, the housing levy, 1.5%. Uh, the initial one was, uh, was uh, 3%, but with a, a cap of 5,000. Employer took five on the higher side and employee to five. Now it is not that way. It, it, it was initially um, a contribution where in seven years you could get back your money if you are to, to, to withdraw from um, the, the contribution or if you retired. Now it's a levy, so it's more of a tax on, 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 um, on the gross uh, income of the employee, then automatically it reduces the disposable income employees also there is the question of um, uh, uh, 32.5 percent pay as you earn and 35 percent pay as you earn which has been uh, introduced for employees earning 500 to 800 <coughs> kenya shillings the pay -E rate now it's at 32.5 percent while those earning above 800 it's now 35 percent and I, I just need to mention that uh, you you will realize that um, as this increases, this is on the gross income. As this increases, 1.5 is on gross income. And then, of course, you had the president, and I talked about this a little bit last time, where the president is, is um, uh, mentioned about increase in NHIF to 2.75%, which is... Um, on gross income again, like the 1.5%. So a Kenyan would be said to be highly taxed in such a way that if it is 35% of pay -Y plus 1.5% of housing levy, that becomes 36 point, uh, let's call it 36.5, plus 2.75, call it three, that brings it. So you'll be taxed like as an employee to the tune of 40%. But you have to remember that, again, you'll be uh, getting uh, an effect on um, a VAT as you move out. The disposable income has reduced, but you go to buy something, 16% uh, VAT is there. But again, the, 
the cost of living and the cost of the Kenya shilling for those. This completely erodes the purchasing power of um, uh, employees. Employers, the, the increase in deductions, uh, of course, it affects the employers in one way or the other because there is the normal corporation tax of 30%. And then the employee, the employers are also required to pay 1.5% housing levy, pay the NHIF. Uh, you have to also pay the NSSF. <clears throat> and then um, this would be really put pressure on employers. And uh, the likely effect is that uh, uh, some of the employers may, 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 may cut down on a number of employees just to see if they can manage the the cost of uh, running business. Of course, with the increased uh, fuel cost, the entire cost of production, distribution, and even movement of staff, including uh, payment for utilities, will uh, definitely uh, affect employers. And the number of um, employees will have to go down. And one of the issues we as, as professionals we've been talking about is the employer may <clears throat> may now uh, convert some of the top management uh, employees to be probably on a, on a management contract where they offer services like um, consultants. And then the, the government may be able to, of course, tax will be on uh, withholding the purposes. So the government may end up losing the 1.5% uh, as the employer saves it. Oh, or, or, or whatever arrangement may be, which means generally is that the, we shall lose jobs. And then the, there is the question of the retirees. The, the, there is a tax relief of 15% on post-retirement medical fund. Of course, we, we know as pensioners when they get old and all that, it has been a bigger issue. So there is a, there is a, a, an encourage, a sort of an encouragement by the government that uh, they relieve, uh, they relieve, uh, they give a uh, tax relief on post-retirement medical contribution by employees for, for, of course, for the future of the pensioners. But the pension bill, you'll realize that for those who've just retired recently, the, the bill is going so high. The teachers and many other civil servants, the, the, the budget uh, strain has been there on uh, getting the payments for pension. So this is another issue that uh, is likely to uh, really affect the revenue collection targets, which may not be met. And if they are met, the, 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 the huge impact on payment of pensioners would also arise. <clears throat> now on investment, the effect of the Finance Act is, um, is huge. We have... Um, uh, the, the question of uh, farms depending on uh, the, the, the incentives on the local manufacturing. Uh, the, the Finance Act seems to encourage uh, investment through various deductions, various um, um, discouragements, for example, iron and steel, the, the, the government is imposing on, through the Finance Act uh, an excise duty on imported iron, which implies that they are encouraging local manufacturing. Imported fish, excise duty on it. There is imported furniture. You had the president talk about uh, timber and furniture at 45%. The imported paint, furnishes and related products, 15%. And then, of course, assembly of electric buses, motor vehicles, and the LPG. Uh, 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 leading to green energy where we have zero rated LPG. But having said that, you'll notice that, and I'll talk about it again, that Kenya mostly is a net importer. Some of these things we are discouraging, but at the end of the day, some of them have to be imported. And at the end of the day, you'll realize that uh, the imported goods with these taxes will be so high um, when the local production cannot meet that. Now, rental income and landlords, the, the Finance Act has reduced um, the rental, uh, residential rental income from 10% to 7.5%, which is a, a, a welcome uh, move to the landlords. But it's meant, of course, to encourage uh, compliance, whereby uh, more landlords will be able to uh, give, uh, pay the 7.5% the of the tax. 
but it, the, the question of uh, whether the reduction of the rental, residential rental income tax from 10% to 7% will be, um, uh, will help, uh, I mean, will reduce the, 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 the rent for, for those who pay rent is another question. Probably landlords may need to reduce rent, but again, you'll realize that uh, rent never goes down in this uh, part of the world. The, the other question, uh, as professionals, we've been asking, if we are reducing the rental income from 10 to 7.5%, um, it may be a welcome move, but uh, what is the impact? Is it likely to bring in more taxes? Is it likely to bring in, uh, I mean, uh, more compliance or not? It's a question which is still debatable. <clears throat> And then we have the turnover tax provisions, the impact of the turnover tax provisions. The, the government, uh, the, of course, uh, through the CS professor, Juguna Ndungu, the, the turnover tax uh, was retained, but they, they, <coughs> they amended the, 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 the threshold, which was initially 1 million to 50 million, but the, 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 the Finance Act reduced the upper limit to from uh, 50 million to 25 million. In, the, in doing this, you'll realize that many businesses will now fall in the turnover tax bracket. So in, in essence, expanding the tax base, um, but how much businesses are we looking at? Um, because there are no projections exactly provided by the minister or cabinet sector in terms of uh, how much uh, we intend to collect when we reduce the upper limit for the turnover tax from um, 50 million of, uh, to, to, to 25 million, which is like half. But it's a good move because it expands the, the tax base and brings in more uh, businesses. But it's also a bad move for those who are doing businesses because now you are brought in, for if you have been doing a business that is um, uh, uh, that has not been paying uh, turnover tax because the, the upper limit was 50 million. Then here you are, the, the, the turnover tax, has, the, the upper limit has been brought down. So then it brings you in to pay the taxes. Now, what are some of the benefits of the Finance Act? Now, um, generally, you will realize that uh, the Finance Act has uh, really talked about farming in terms of continued subsidized fertilizer and other farm inputs. There is also the question of zero rating, the LPG gas, the gas it natumia nyumbani. So it will, once it is zero rated, then it will become a little bit cheaper uh, as a source of uh, cleaner source of energy. Uh, but, but again, we wait to see how that will be uh, received given that um, this has really been a, an issue. Uh, but we ask ourselves again in the rural areas, how does this uh, benefit us? You know, the, the rural setup use uh, mostly firewood and all that. They use kerosene in the stoves in the villages uh, and, 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 and here and there, which is now, of course, uh, with 16% VAT. So we expect, of course, uh, local production to go up because of um, uh, the government uh, imposing uh, in, uh, taxes on imported um, imported um, materials uh, like imported paint imported varnishes imported sugar imported furniture imported steel imported uh, all that but the question we ask ourselves is that um, do we have sufficient imported paint uh, do we have sufficient um, manufacturing companies here that have have this enough um, of, of uh, of what we, we are trying to impose tax on. The other good news is uh, about the internet and uh, reliance on the internet is so high, including what we are doing now. The size duty moved from 12% to 10%. It's a, it's a really uh, good move, which the government uh, has been focusing on digital superhighway pillar under the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, whatever it is. We, 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 we see that the reduction would really uh, help in uh, <coughs> internet penetration. The other one is a refund position. <coughs> it has been amended 
KRA has been compelled uh, to refund uh, if you have been in, if your business is in a, a VAT or whatever refund tax refund position you will be able to get a refund and uh, it has now been put in the finance act as a law that you need to get the refund within six months this has been years and years and if they don't do then uh, you should be able to use the amounts uh, <coughs> that you are claiming to 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 to, to, uh, to utilize it against the current and future taxes which has not been the real case the housing issue we talked about it so much uh, construction and building industry of course will move but generally there will be manual manual jobs so we are likely to to see a creation of employment but particularly for very manual manual jobs uh, which we again ask uh, after that what happens <clears throat> now these are just general thoughts uh, how to mitigate or minimize the effects of the changes Businesses and individuals uh, should be able to adopt some of the <clears throat> minimizing uh, measures. For example, we have no option, uh, colleagues, uh, here that we must operate within a very lean budget. If you have three vehicles moving uh, from your compound, uh, your wife, your, I mean, uh, your, your, your son and yourself and your your, your, your husband, probably is the highest time you, you reduce the, the movement of the vehicles, if, even if they are there, probably to one or three or cost sharing or neighbors uh, trying to <laughs> pull together. We have to, because again, that is really a, a big issue. We, 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 we think you have to buy most of the items that are on discount and in large quantities if the funds are there just to, you know, look at the economies of scale generally. But uh, uh, more importantly, you have to have a side hustle uh, to get additional sources of income in addition to what you earn. Now, other general um, other general briefs is that um, the, the the finance act has now uh, opened up it used to have the, this issue that um, tax records or financial records must be kept in kenya now it can be kept anywhere including the cloud anywhere in, outside the country and then there is the question of the insurance compensation uh, which is subject to vat where vat <clears throat> put vat was claimed at the time of that particular uh, uh, the, the, that, that insurance compensation is subject to VAT where input VAT was claimed initially. We, we foresee that interest rates will continue rising due to the increased government borrowing, especially on the domestic market. We also uh, foresee an exchange rate pressure to continue. Currently, you see that um, the, the Kenya shilling uh, has crossed, uh, you know, uh, again, the dollar has crossed the 140 mark which has never been the case. But again, we have so much imports to make and uh, the inflationary pressures will continue being around. So that is an issue. What is also uh, a general brief is that uh, club subscriptions are now taxable on employee if the employer takes a deduction. Now this uh, is, is still a, a very um, dicey area because again, uh, do chamas fall here? Um, the, because they contribute and make uh, contributions to to chamas and um, and it's likely to have an effect. Um, you'll have um, initially this was not subject to tax. The club subscriptions were not really subject to tax, so they they have brought in uh, more tax uh, collection points through the sports clubs and and, and the rest. But again, what we are saying is that uh, the, the, uh, um, uh, 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 in the act, what is also interesting is that the Commissioner of Income Tax, KRA, uh, can assist foreign authorities, foreign countries to collect tax. This, we are looking at it like it will open uh, an avenue for even us, Kenyans, uh, the Kenyan, uh, the Kenyans, uh, Kenyan uh, authority, Kenya Revenue Authority to be able to uh, get assistance from foreign countries to collect tax that is uh, probably kept out there. 
general outlook and other scenarios uh, which is um, we have um, we have to make a lot of invention these are tough times innovations are likely to go uh, to increase because we have to find a way of surviving in this uh, very tough time because you will realize that uh, it's not uh, going to be so easy now some of the thoughts not really final thoughts as the in the, as it has been put, um, we foresee as professionals compliance challenges in collection of taxes. When you are overtaxed, you find a, uh, you'll find that Kenyans will find a way of uh, evading tax. They will find a way of um, avoiding tax. And I've seen this uh, uh, very quickly. It's happening that you'll find uh, a shop has. Um, uh, has, a, has a pay bill, but the same shop has opened uh, a Safaricom, um, you know, um, agency. So you go in and uh, you want to buy. Uh, I saw it recently, uh, as, as, as early as late as uh, as early as uh, last Saturday, where you go to a shop, you want to buy a spare part or anything. They tell you this is the price if you have to pay through uh, the the pay bill then we'll charge you the taxes but if and, and the price will be this but if you want to buy directly without going into the teams then uh, withdraw the cash so compliance issues and evasion avoidance is likely to be there <clears throat> the kenya Revenue authority is likely to be under a lot of pressure and uh, they may be so aggressive in uh, in collecting taxes with this finance act and, and 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 actually lose the human face, and uh, they they may uh, uh, close uh, businesses here and there. So businesses are likely to close due to pressure on tax collection, and 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 and, and of course uh, this is common as businesses close, uh, we lose uh, employment income. We also lose the very tax that they they are looking for uh, to, to collect. The loss of employment, this, uh, this is going to happen. We cannot run away from it because uh, uh, companies are going to cut costs and move to management arrangements like I already mentioned. The cost of imported goods to, will have to increase because uh, remember we are more of a, a net importer in most cases. So the cost of goods, because we have tried to say we are creating a manufacturing setup, but we are not yet there. So we still have to import. Of course, production, food production, we expect it to increase with the subsidies uh, to the agricultural products and other. But consumption taxes like VAT and excise duty are likely to reduce um, because there is no disposable income uh, from the salary lead or employed people or the disposable income has reduced. So you you realize that consumption uh, taxes like uh, VAT you will reduce because you will even reduce your 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 budget to do as you move to the supermarket or any shop you you'll buy sparingly not as uh, it used to be there is no there is a likelihood that the impulse buying is not likely to be there again from a foreign direct investment perspective kenya may be an attractive to potential investors um, because of uh, what they may call, uh, um, what they may view as a high tax jurisdiction. That we, so foreign investors may actually move out of the country, or those that uh, intend to come then will be, of course, uh, unable to. The cash flow implication on businesses, that is likely to happen. You'll, you'll realize that we are required to pay or remit withholding tax within five days. They had put 24 hours, but now it's five days. Initially, it used to be the 20th of the following months. That's when you are to remit and file. Of course, there is the good news on the reduction of import uh, declaration and uh, the railway maintenance uh, development levy. But uh, generally, you'll realize that uh, uh, we, we should be able to, 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 to finance our debt if we collect these funds uh, very well. But of course, we have to support the, we, we have to direct 
the money to the projects that um, can have some uh, high return on investment. But the public debt pressure is with us here, and uh, it will be here for um, some time, uh, not uh, a very short, short, short time. And the problem we are having is the crowding of domestic lending. If you remember the days of uh, President Mike Kibaki the late, when he took over power, uh, his economics were very interesting. The banks would um, would walk in to would follow you up to you know we were saying the banks were hawking um, uh, loans to people. Right now, if you walk into a bank and you want to get a loan, it is just not. <laughs> they look at you like. <laughs> what do you mean? Because they are lending to the government through the treasury bills. But the banks are also very careful to lend to the government. They are not lending to the, to the government through the treasury bills that are long term. It's just short term. And the interest rates are so high. So again, businesses are not able to borrow, individuals are not able to borrow from banks uh, to be able to, 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 to grow the, the economy. I would want to stop there because of uh, time and request uh, if there are any discussion points, comments, clarifications, questions, and then we can be able to discuss uh, here and respond to them uh, today uh, in the remaining minutes to the 9 p.m. time. Thank you. Back to Evangelist Mahinda. Yes, um, we want to thank you so much, CPA, for the well done and uh, articulated presentation, and especially on the bit on the impact on of the Finance Act on us, uh, both the positives and the negatives. And I think members, you've heard it from him. The people who had said they had questions they wanted to ask. So we would also want to make this a moment of engagement. So just in case you have a question or a clarification that you may need or, or even a comment, feel free to share that with us. You can just open up your mic or even write it on the chat section. And I believe um, our guest tonight will be able to respond to that. So. Karibuni sana for any question, comment, or clarification that you may need. So I can see a thumbs up from Nancy Kathuku, appreciating the presentation. Any other person with something to ask or say, or even add? Hello. Amina Swambogo is saying on, uh, yes, uh, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Harrison. Thank you, CPA Philip. Uh, my name is Lucy. I'm so grateful for the presentation, but I think I have one question. Uh, is it the right time to invest on boards or bills for an individual? And for those who have invested, how safe are we? Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Over to you, CPA. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've, I've seen Wambugu with a question on the chat in relation to keeping records anywhere. Initially, for tax purposes, uh, you ought to have had your records kept in Kenya. That is what the Finance Act initially had. But now you um, records can be kept anywhere, including uh, where, what I refer to as the cloud. And even records kept in other foreign countries can be accessible and can be allowed to be accessed for purposes of tax. So when we say keeping records, um, there, are, there is an amendment in the Act, Finance Act, to allow uh, access to any of the records uh, for tax purposes. Uh, records here, we for tax purposes, we look at financial reporting, uh, you know, records, uh, accounting records, and many others that uh, a taxman would want to access in terms of getting um, a, an assessment. And number two, Lucy, is it the right time to um, uh, to invest in bonds and treasury bills? 
Um, and, 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 and I could add there, is it the right time to invest in a foreign currency in this country, buy foreign currency and keep and, 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 and speculate? Now, um, I'll be honest with you that uh, currently the, the treasury bills, especially the short term ones, are very, very, um, they, 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 they have a very good return. Uh, because we have um, a very high interest rate. As we go forward, this may come down. So my thinking is um, the bonds and treasury bills, especially short term, they, they, are, they are good to, to invest in because um, the government, of course, uh, at the moment, the other day, they were getting uh, credit, uh, credit from the market at 16 point, um, uh, above 16%. This has never happened to a treasury bill bond, or, or it has no, not occurred any soon. So I would encourage that uh, you, you, it's the best time to, to invest in treasury bonds or bills, but short term, because again, if you do long term, then um, the returns may not be as such. Um, there was a time uh, where the, the Kenya shilling was actually a hundred... Uh, uh, um, uh, 100 shillings at one time. So if you had bought some dollars and kept them, uh, at the moment we have now um, the, 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 the exchange rate uh, at, um, at almost 141 shillings. So you'll find that the difference if you had dollars, but that is more of holding uh, dollars and uh, it's, it's also not really acceptable. So treasury bills, Treasury bonds, short-term investment, yes, now. Long-term, anything could change uh, between now and uh, the, the, the period. Foreign exchange investment, a bit tricky because the Kenya shilling would be fluctuating. Uh, and if their fundamentals are to change, then it becomes an issue. The other question I've seen on the chart is the question of uh, insurance, insurance, I have missed, uh, that is Leonard Rocha. Uh, due to late arrival, my question, what is this about taxing insurance payouts on assets as insurance payments have not been subject to tax? Would it amount to underpayment or contrary to well-known insurance doctrines? Yes, um, Leonard, this is an issue that is really under debate, but what uh, uh, the, the act, the insurance, the finance act put across is, um, it may not really happen directly, but they are saying that insurance compensation um, will be a tax in case uh, uh, in case the the input um, the input VAT had been uh, uh, claimed on the insurance uh, 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 whatever insurance. How do I put it? Insurance compensation is subject to VAT where input VAT was claimed. But if the input VAT was not claimed, then the compensation that you get will not be uh, subject to any of the, the, the taxes, the VAT and the rest. So it is something that um, is, is under a lot of debate because insurance, when you insure, the, the insurance uh, compensation should take you back to where you are without making you, uh, restoring you to where you are. When we look at the doctrines of indemnity, um, subrogation, the, the, the various uh, doctrines of insurance, you cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot be able to be taxed on something that uh, you are being compensated. So in, in essence, they have to really prove and you, the, 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 the taxman has really to get deeper and find out whether you you had claimed um, or the organization had claimed uh, input VAT for them to charge you VAT on your compensation. So it might be a bit of a dicey area, an area which may require a little bit of um, uh, getting deeper into it. Now, the other question is from Lina. I'm just speaking uh, evangelist from the chat. Uh, Lina, uh, uh, Lina says, please, please advise the already existing long-term bonds. What do we do? 
Now, the already existing long-term bonds or treasury bills, they, 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 of course, there is um, an interest, a rate under which you 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 you, you, you quote them. So they, they, we we believe and trust that uh, the government cannot uh, fail to to pay off to pay off the the existing long-term bonds, or the government does not fail to pay back if the, it borrows. So we are cushioned by that belief. But you will notice that uh, of late, the bonds or treasury bills that have been floated, uh, the government does not get, the central bank does not get uh, a very good traction on the long-term ones, but it gets very quick traction on the short-term ones. And at the short-term ones, you'll realize that our banks are also taking advantage of the situation. They go, they, they tend to, to, to quickly move to the short-term borrowing because the interests are higher and they'll be able to recoup their money quickly and reinvest again faster. They are avoiding long-term. Uh, they are creating a, actually a situation that the government may default. But we still hold the fact that the government may not be able to default on any long-term uh, bonds or treasury bills that have been existing. That would be uh, my, my, my quick take on that. Thank you. Evangelist, Minder. Can I, I can see, um, Danson, is your hand up? Danson, Shage. May I ask a question? Yes, it's yes. okay. Okay, uh, my question is, uh, for those that have loans currently, are we expecting a change of interest rate? Okay, uh, Dr. Naomi, I guess. Um, now for bonds that are already existing long term, uh, already, the, there is no change of interest rate. It's a fixed rate that you entered into. So when they mature, they will be paid at that particular rate. It will not be like a, a fluctuation saying, um, we took this bond at this rate, but then we are getting it at this rate. So it comes down or a fluctuation of any nature. The, there is no change that is expected. It's just that we are advising from a professional point of view as an institute, that uh, if you want uh, quick money, you could invest in short-term bonds and, uh, and and get them back and reinvest. Invest uh, short-term loans, uh, bonds, and then reinvest. Long-term, uh, even you'll realize that investment bankers and even banks themselves, they, they, they are, they are playing around with the government because they know it's a desperate situation. So they, they don't go for the long-term loans because they want to get a good rate now and reinvest back uh, uh, into the short-term bonds again. So no change, not up, not down, but when they mature, then they'll be paid at that um, particular rate that was already fixed. CPA, does that allow? Does that apply also to the loans from the uh, banks? Now um, we have uh, we have what we call the monetary policy uh, issue. You saw the the new central bank governor, uh, Dr. Kamau Tuke. They they increased the 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 interest rate, uh, the 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 base the base lending rate by the banks. And uh, if uh, if I may ask, uh, if I may respond too quickly to your question and that of Leonard Rocha, who says the issue of commercial bank loans and possible direction on interest rates, the interest rates are likely to go up. I, in my presentation, I said the interest rates are likely to go up because uh, domestically, in the, the domestic market, it is the government that is heavily borrowing. So the banks are more interested in lending to the government because they are sure of paying back. But again, the interest rates are likely to go up because the base lending rate by the CBK has now uh, moved uh, up from, from 9.5 to 10.5 percentage points. So interest rates are likely to go up. 
Um, and, and, and again, you will realize that uh, the banks will be adjusting. The commercial banks have, have this behavior, which is a bit annoying. You take a loan at, uh, let's, let's say, 14%. But when the interest rate go up, uh, when the, 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 the lending rate, uh, base lending rate by the central bank goes up, they do adjust. They do adjust the, 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 the interest you are paying. Mostly, when it goes down, they don't really quickly adjust. But when it goes up, they do adjust very quickly. So the interest rate is likely to go up because of the crowding of the... The, the, the government borrowing from us domestically because again you'll realize that the government at the moment it's in a catch-22 situation we 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 have a sort of borrowed internationally to a level where we may not be able to borrow again so we we borrow most of the time from uh, the local market that's how i would uh, quickly pick it up and uh, this is an area which uh, I'm happy because I'm also in those long-term bonds as a person and treasury bills as a uh, short-term treasury bills. And I have a commercial bank loan, which uh, we've already received notices saying that they will be <laughs> adjusting the, the rates. And, 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 and uh, there was a time when even they asked you whether you want to spread it to a longer period for you to be able to repay. But of course, loan defaults are going to be many uh, the, the, in, 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 the, in the short run. We'll have a lot of uh, loan defaults. Uh, of course, when people lose jobs again, the, 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 the loan defaults will uh, increase. We are not seeing a very good um, situation, but we are hoping that um, the, 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 there will be some improvement, especially for cost of living. We, uh, we expect uh, with the rains, with the subsidy, we, we are likely to get some food, but um, on a bigger scale, we are likely to have a lot of inflationary pressure, especially with the increase in VAT on uh, on fuel. Back to you, Evangelist. Right. So is there anything else, members? Um... All right, we want to thank uh, CPA Philip for um, a presentation well done. And uh, this presentation is available um, because we have recorded and um, as usual, we shall post it on our YouTube channel. And you can also access all other virtual engagements that we've done. So thank you so much CPA for coming again today. And uh, we hope to keep engaging you in case of any other discussion that uh, goes your line. We also want to wish you well in your career and um, even in the position you are buying for, we pray that God will give you favor. Thank you so much and also those who helped us to connect with you. Members of Santeni Sana for tuning in tonight. Our virtual engagements are back every other Tuesday. Using the same link, you can... Um, always join and we shall be letting you know what we shall be discussing next. So bon bariki sana, and we want to wish you a good evening and that the peace of God may be with us all. So at this point, I want us to end with the words of grace and then we call it a night. So and now may the grace of our oh, Lord Jesus Lord Christ, Christ and the love of the Lord and the Amen. 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 Amen.